Hey everyone, welcome to the show. And uh, first of all, hey, look, I'm super excited about something. I'm running a competition on the channel. Recently, I launched my new online course on networking strategies that I have used for the past two years to find, connect, and then build relationships with the world's top leading experts in all different sort of fields. And what I've done is I've compiled those strategies in a course that I've recently launched. And if you are watching this video right now, what I want you to do is go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and leave a comment on this video or any other video. So as long as you do that, as long as you subscribe to the channel and leave a comment on any video, you automatically get entered into the competition. And on the 1st of September, 2018 I will introduce the winner and what you get if you win the competition is free access to that course okay I'm gonna give you free access to my brand new course it's absolutely amazing I have worked really really hard on packing it absolutely full of values okay it's just been launched for about two weeks ago and we've already got full five star reviews on that course so make sure you hit the subscribe button and leave a comment now on to tonight's guest. She is absolutely amazing. She is actually a, a life coach and she works with people in all walks of life and she helps them accelerate in areas where they are feeling stuck. Now, recently what's happened is something that I have noticed. There's a, this almost like a huge demand for life coaches and there's been an increase uh, in the number of people who want to become life coaches as a result. So life coaching was, you know, when I first came across it, it was something quite new to me and I wasn't quite sure what that entails. But having, you know, you know, I've known a few people, I've worked with a few people. So, you know, since then, it has really kind of opened my eyes in terms of what it can really do for you, the power behind having a good life coach. And on this channel, obviously, we explore holistic success. We're always talking about what does it take to be successful in every area of your life. And many a times, for example, like if, if your health is suffering, you go see a doctor. If you need legal advice, you go see a lawyer. If you need financial advice, you see a financial consultant or uh, an accountant. But when it comes to our personal issues, we hold back. It's like, you know, we have this wall that comes up all of a sudden when it's something to do with our personal issues and we don't really reach out and seek out an expert in that field but the good news is in today's day and, and technology has made it really easy to actually find people who are life coaches who can help you with their personal stuff so i'm gonna stop talking i'm gonna actually move on and introduce <laughs> our amazing guest tonight her name is Bonnie and uh, she is from New Zealand. We've actually become really good friends. We, we met through our mutual connection. We've become really, really good friends and she is absolutely tremendous. So which, without much further ado, let's welcome Bonnie to the show. Bonnie, thanks for being here. Thank you, Talal. It's lovely to be here. I'm very excited <laughs> about hearing about your um, new online course. How exciting. <laughs> yes, yes, it is very exciting. And the, the cool thing is I just recently launched it. Um, and, uh, you know, a couple of my close friends, you know, they, they jumped all over it. And, uh, you know, I, I've, I've got, you know, five star reviews because That's they're awesome. just like, you know, we, 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 and if you read the, the, the review, it, it says, guess what? I thought I'll just get some information. This is not that this, this is way beyond it. This is like, we are actually being coached on a one-to-one -one basis. Wow. It's at a whole nother level. Wow. So yeah, this is, uh, that's, that's, really, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's awesome. really exciting. That's really exciting. <laughs> but anyway, Bonnie, thanks for being here. Uh, really excited to have you on. I mean, <laughs> We, we, became, we became really good friends after we got first introduced. We, we jumped on a call um, and, and there was a lot of synergy. We, we had the same mm. sort of values. And uh, yep. you know, since then, we, we've had quite a few calls since then and working on different things, talking about different stuff. But you actually you know, um, are an amazing life coach. You work with so many different people. So tell us about how you got started. What actually led you down this path of wanting to become a life coach and helping people with their personal issues? I think um, I've always been somebody that I really enjoy supporting others and that's just always sort of been within my nature. Um, and I grew up and my dad was actually a minister of a church and my mum was a grief counsellor. So that kind of flavour was always in the mix. Um, I kind of got to a stage where I 
I kind of thought, oh, I want to give really good advice, which, you know, I will get to that later. But um, what I realized was uh, that actually advice isn't helpful at all <laughs> and that actually everyone has their own answers within them. So I actually found um, a man, Clem, that you know, um, and when I spoke to him on the phone, everything he said resonated with me um, and I really wanted to learn more about what he had to offer. So I went and did his training course to become a, a holistic life coach and I never turned back. So that's kind of as simple as it was uh, for that sort of part of the journey. But then once I started unpacking what being a life coach means and actually going through the process myself, it really radically shifted my perspective of life and I really started to enjoy things and unpack things and then get really super curious about how I tick and other people also and so in, in showing sharing with others tools and skills to be able to help unpack their stuff um, seeing people sort of sink into themselves and who they are and really love who they are and find their brilliance and then become proud of that is a really beautiful um, walk to um, to sort of support somebody in yeah awesome Awesome. Um, now, how long ago was it that you made the decision that you want you wanted to become a life coach? And what were you doing before that? Well, I actually just, um, I lived in the States for a few years and I actually just moved back to New Zealand with um, my small daughter. So I was kind of um, starting again, really. I was starting from scratch and there was, you know, it was no plain sailing when I moved back. It was, um, you know, her father was um, remaining in the States and so there was a whole lot of stuff to kind of, um, go through as far as, you know, I felt a lot of guilt and I felt experienced all these really um, unpleasant feelings really. So it was really around unpacking that and processing um, where, where I was kind of, what direction that was going to, I was going to go in. And um, I sing in the band also, and there was kind of that, but I knew that I wanted something more out of life and I wanted something with a bit more depth and a bit more fulfilling um, than just doing that, although I loved that as well. So really it became a, a um, it became a kind of a quest of, of what my life's purpose is really, which I found. Yay. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. awesome. That's great. Now what I have noticed, and, and there seems to be a trend because <laughs> I've had lots of other guests on, on the show and they're all from different walks of life, right? Like they're mm. not all life coaches. They're not all, you know, business consultants. They're not all uh, FBI special agents, although I've had those on the show, but, but, <laughs> The thing is, what, what they all talk about is the fact that at some point in life, they had tremendous amount of pain or mm -hmm. they hit a massive obstacle and they couldn't get through it. But mm -hmm. they were able to find their, their passion and their purpose and their mission in life by just trying to find an answer to their problems, by just trying to find a cure Absolutely. for their own pain. Do you feel that the same, you went through the same sort of process? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, now on the other side of things, I call that the opportunity. <laughs> Life gifts us those opportunities all the time. And it is about perspective. It's exact. It's all about how we approach those things and, and our viewpoint. Um, and if we can reframe those experiences for ourselves, um, usually the greatest gifts do come with a lot of pain. And the reason this, well, there's many reasons for that, but part of it is the, the kind of universal annihilation that we need to go through. We need to kind of get refined and stripped back of all the extra stuff that we put on ourselves that, that life becomes, if that's not actually the purpose. And so I think the universal spirit or whatever you have faith in actually does us a, a, a service by stripping back that, that stuff. But it's so different and new to what we're used to dealing with and experiencing that it's, it causes a lot of discomfort for us. Um, and that's all part of the annihilation, which is the beautiful refining that we're gifted um, to either reroute our course or to find a, a, a direction with a deeper purpose, which is, you know, what we're here for. But yeah, they, it is opportunity and it, and it happens um, more than once. There's quite, quite often, you know, we get many opportunities within our life and they, and they can be incredibly painful and they can be incredibly raw. Um, and I think that there's a real beauty in the richness of that experience and that um, feeling, but it can be super unpleasant in the, in the moment. So what, what we can do is actually um, perspective taken and find the understanding and the purpose for those experiences and those opportunities that actually, um, yeah, I mean, I guess the, the kind of journey that I lead people through at the end of it, um, I believe that actually they will be grateful to those, those painful moments. Now, Vonnie, there's, uh, 
like an ideology which talks about the fact that you face adversities and, and these problems mm -hmm. and these issues in life because they are there to help you become the person you were meant to become. Now, mm -hmm. I totally buy into that and, and I, I believe in that. But for others, it, they, they find it quite difficult because it's like, why are, do you have to go through all the bad stuff in life in order to find some good or in order to, you know, become the person you were meant to be? So mm -hmm. can you maybe clarify that for those people who might be sitting in the audience thinking, well, how, how is that really possible when, when you actually have to go through hardship in order to, to become the person that you were meant to be and, and, and achieve like, you know, that transcend, transcendence? I think um, there's many, many schools of thought around that. And I think um, if, to put it in really super simple terms, it's the stretch and grow. You don't, you don't grow without discomfort. So, you know, you think about the, the, um, the rubber band model. There's the, there's the comfort zone, the stretch zone, and the break zone. No one wants to break, um, but you don't actually grow if you don't get the discomfort of the stretch. So uh, that's important through through anything, you know, even through m mastering a skill, through, you know, to become an Olympic athlete, you're going to have some, you know, there's some mornings that you don't want to get up and that can be painful. There's going to be some training sessions that are going to be grueling, but actually there's growth at the end of that. It's, I think the difference is, is that you can see the, the kind of um, light at the end of the tunnel or the point, the direction, you know exactly what you're aiming for. And the difference with, um, with life annihilation is that sometimes you don't, you don't know the purpose in the moment and you can't see why. And that's, that's what causes the discomfort because you haven't planned it. It's not your choice. Sometimes we get gifted those curveballs, which um, once you realize that life's a wave and you choose to ride it, it becomes a lot less um, traumatic because you stop resisting and it's in the resisting, the shift and the growth that actually the pain happens. I'm not sure if that answers your question, but yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. But you, you, you talked about universal annihilation there. Um, mm. To be honest, I've, I've never actually heard about that before. So that's the first time I'm actually hearing okay. about that thing. So can, can you maybe explain what that is? Um, it's, it's um, well, I guess just to give a bit of context within what I do and the things that I put on, um, we look at mythology. And so it's a really mythological term because we talk about the mythology themes and the themes of mythology are themes that everyone experiences in life to some degree. Some people will experience more, um, say for example, uh, well the, some of the themes are there's the betrayal, there's the sacred, there's the, the great journey. Journey, um, the sacred journey. So there's all these these experiences that people have, but to a lesser or more degree, depending on your particular journey that you sort of choose when you come to this earth, or that you're gifted, depending on your frame of reference for that. So the annihilation is simply the refining, where life gives you something that seems overwhelming, and on paper you're like, "Wow, how can I even manage this, and how can I deal with this?" But it's just it's simply the purpose of it is simply the the refining, just like you were talking before. It's the refining and the stripping back. Um, it's that that pain to invite that deeper purpose and that growth, and it can be incredibly painful. Um, but yeah, the annihilation is just that. It's where you feel absolutely annihilated, and you're like. What can I do with this? Where is this coming from and what's the purpose of it? So um, actually having, a, having some kind of, um, we call it universality or like the, the kind of understanding that actually everybody goes through that at some stage, that it is completely normal. It's absolutely unpleasant. But within that, you can find understanding um, from others who have also suffered their annihilation, which possibly or probably will look completely different. Mm, right. Okay. Uh, for people in the audience, uh, the the connection just seemed uh, a, a, a little bit shaky there. Um, I mean, we, we still got everything that Vonnie was saying. It's just that it was a little bit shaky. But then again, I'm based in UK. Vonnie's based in New Zealand. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have we control okay. over this. All right? all right. <laughs> yeah, we don't have control over the connection, even though, you know, I, I have like a state of the art, super high powered fiber optic <laughs> messes up um anyways yeah so no you 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 talked about growth there and, and that's uh, that's mm. really interesting the fact that you know you you cannot grow without adversity and uh, that's 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 a that's a really important concept i think and, and many people struggle with that but i uh, do you know do, do you follow ufc at all by any chance no no do, do you know about ufc no <laughs> You don't know about UFC? Okay. Uh, have you heard <laughs> of Ronda Rousey? She's, she's absolutely... No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. 
I'm in right, my little so, New Zealand box over here. <laughs> okay, all right. So I, I'm going to have to fill you in. And, and for people in the audience, uh, get ready, because this is one of those times where I, I'm Ooh, guys okay. in on this. So basically, UFC is the biggest promotion of uh, MMA fighting. You know, uh, they, they promote MMA fights and fighters, etc. Um, and it's the biggest proportion in the world. It stands for Ultimate Fighting Championship. And for those people who don't know what MMA is, it stands for Mixed Martial Arts or otherwise also known as cage fighting. And uh, one of the top female um, athletes that was, uh, uh, I, I believe she's, she's retired now, uh, with the UFC was Ronda Rousey. And, and she was like, she, she broke onto the scene and, and she was just like, you know, she was just next level, like, you know, flipping people and breaking their arms and like, you know, just, unbelievable like she dominated the scene for a very long time and she was a female world champion for a very long time and then she's now transitioned into wwe and movies and, and things like that but one of the things that she said was that when you fail you grow when you win you maintain you don't learn anything and, and that that just really stuck with me ever since that mm -hmm. and then now that you mentioned growth i, I just kind of make that link and and um i i i, I just thought i'll mention that because um absolutely. it's very true it's very true absolutely and so many people also fear failure which is another kind of pocket <laughs> that i often find myself in um mm -hmm. because of the, the fear of failure is, is is so huge for people you know because of their schema and their core beliefs and how they grow up and their expectations on themselves and what they you know perceived expectations from others so it's really around unpacking that and i absolutely agree with what she said you mm -hmm. know you don't grow because you think oh cool sweet now that and that's kind of where you stay but if you you know you get um well, there's, there's often different ways that people can respond to failure as well. But ideally, it puts a bit of fire in your belly and you get curious and you go, okay, cool. I'm going to explore different ways that I can do this. You know, it's the same, it's the same as the light bulb dude. You know, the whole, I didn't learn, I didn't fail. I learned 9,999 ways it didn't work. Oh, so it's yeah. about reframing it to a learning. Yeah, yeah. Thomas Edison. Yeah, very famous That's quote. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't, I didn't fail 10,000 times. I just worked out 10,000 ways it didn't work. So exactly. yeah. Yeah. So it's, how's that for tonight? <laughs> Sorry. I know. Right. Um, but you know, you, you talk about the fear of failure and I think that that's quite mm -hmm. a common thing that a lot of people struggle with. You know, I, I know mm -hmm. I struggle with that as uh, you know, a, a lot of the times as well, but there's, yeah. There's also what you find is sometimes people have a fear of success as in like, what if I actually do this? Oh my word. Like, how would I deal with that? Do you, do you find that people, people, hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. There's a, there's a, um, I'm always my favorite quote in the whole wide entire world that I always bang on about is the Marianne Williamson quote. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not our dark that, that frightens us. It's actually a light and it's our brilliance and people are so scared to step into their brilliance and people don't allow themselves permission to be brilliant. And that again, it comes from core beliefs and schema that we pick up. Um, you know, there's lots of rules around, you know, I must be humble. I must da 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 da. Um, and actually, I just think, it, you know, you've, everyone is given gifts. Everyone is, you, you know, it, it might take a while to figure out what yours are, but everybody has gifts and it's about actually stepping into that and owning it and claiming it and smashing it. Like, let's do this. You know, there's so many gifts that go um, untouched or unshared because people are scared to seem like they're boasting or to seem proud or to be, you know, they've been taught to be humble or for whatever reason. Um, I, I really think that's it's almost an epidemic actually people the br people's brilliance is so hidden and it's just it's a crime mm. Mm. and and why do you think that is why do you think their their brilliance is most of the time hidden and, and why do you think they they struggle with giving themselves the permission to go ahead and you know explore their brilliance and succeed i do i do believe it comes back down to um schema or core beliefs and so that, that's um there's there's three things we learn in life. There's, uh, we learn about ourselves, we learn about others, and we learn about the world. Mm -hmm. And we learn about those through three ways. So from our parenting, from our environment, and from our experiences. So um, those three things, usually by the age of seven, all our core beliefs are sort of our foundation is built, if you like. And of course, that, you know, that can go on, but, but the kind of the bulk of what we know life to be, or what, what it means, or what the rules are, is kind of ingrained in us by the age of seven. So if you look at when you were seven years old, who was around you? Who were your role models? How were you growing up? You know, did did you learn that life was abundant or, did, or, or was it scarce? Did you learn that life is fair or are people trying to cheat you? So all these things we, we're absorbing like we sponges. 
Yeah. And along with that, um, because I think so many, so few people have role model living in their brilliance and actually living in their light, um, it's just something that's so rare. And, and you know, the few people or the people that do choose to, to live in their brilliance so quickly and readily get shot down by, you know, jealousy or criticism or people that are just trying to cut people down or tall poppy syndrome, people that are, you know, that kind of don't like people to stick up above the rest where I believe they should be celebrated and let's just bring it on. We can have the most incredible, you know, incredible neighborhoods, but instead we've got these people living out of um, fear and, and what they believe they are expected to be from others. That's all perception. Yeah. I mean, if you explore uh, child development and child psychology, I mean, that's something that yeah. they, they talk about all the time that up mm -hmm. to the, oh, my, my computer's pinging. I think I'm getting messages on Facebook Messenger for some reason. I must have left it open by accident. <laughs> <laughs> but going back to, <laughs> well, I hope not because you're on a call right now. Um, but, you know, in, in child psychology and child development, they talk about like up, up, up to the age of seven, you're like, mm -hmm. you know, you're just like a sponge. You absorb everything in the environment um, around you. And, uh, you know, I, I think a lot of the life coaching work is the fact that you go back to, to that age mm -hmm. and you explore what what is it that you that you took on board at that time that's not absolutely. actually serving you anymore absolutely um, and and how you can shift that right yep 100 percent. i'm sorry you know this the, uh, my facebook is, is still pinging um I, I, I'm, <laughs> gonna, I'm gonna actually pause pause this and I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and actually stop that okay this is just annoying sorry right okay so i've i've fixed my facebook now i'm real back okay so um <laughs> Right. So back to, back to the, the, the work as a life coach where you actually take mm -hmm. the person back into the childhood and you explore what they took on board and how's that not serving them right now. Um, I think that's really interesting simply because the, the, you know, child psychology and child development uh, support that very much that, you know, you're, you're mm -hmm. taking all those beliefs on board and you need to go back and, uh, and, and work with those. Um, I want to go back to the the universal annihilation thing because that's that's like the first time I'm hearing about it and I'm kind of fascinated. Um, is is that something that actually stems from mythology itself? Because you talk about mythology, you know, the, the hero's journey and and betrayal and and love and you know all those things that happen in mythology and and we learn from it from mythology. Um, so in in terms of universal annihilation, is that something that actually stems from mythology itself? Um, well, my understanding of mythology and and my my approach of mythology is that it's a reflection of life. So I think life happened first and then mythology took themes from that to teach us. So the whole idea of mythology, if we think about, you know, the Greeks and Romans and the amphitheaters back in the day, it was all about actually um, teaching guidelines and actually allowing people to see um, those experiences so they can make choices and hopefully avoid them. Now that doesn't, life doesn't really happen like that because we get surprises but um so i think i think annihilation is definitely a reflection of life i think it's probably been um the terminology perhaps has been sort of founded in mythology but i certainly don't think that um mythology kind of made it up so to speak even if you think about all the great the great stories and all the, the epic tales there's always been that that real um that true test of of you know who you are and and that really kind of um it is it's just i, I don't really know how else to to describe it other than a refining and a stripping back. It's like, you know, getting, getting refined by the fire where everything else is taken away and mm. you're left looking in the mirror going, who am I? And it really strips you back and takes you down to that kind of real core essence of who you are. And yeah. there's so much strength and resilience in there that we can find and that, um, that we actually have already, but perhaps gets lost or the light's not shining on it because we're focusing on all the bells and whistles of life that go on around us. Um, or if we get a bit distracted and kind of go off path, it seems to be when um, the universe goes, mm, no, <laughs> and just kind of turns our direction back. But it can be really painful, mm. really painful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, there's, there's that um, thing that they say, like, you know, in, in Hollywood movies, the, the movies who have done really, really well, they have this certain uh, kind of format that they follow, like the hero's yeah. journey format that mm -hmm. they follow, right? Absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, the hero's journey is all about where, where the person experiences all sorts of stuff like, you know, they, they experience loss and betrayal and they experience bereavement mm -hmm. and they experience, yep. you know, joy and, and all sorts of other stuff. But it's all there to teach them and they become uh, a different person or a better person at the end of it. Absolutely. Um, but 
in, in, in terms of mythology, you know, I mean, if, if you look at any culture, they have their own sort of mythology, right? Yep. Any sort of it's civilization, true. even previous civilization, they have their own mythology, like, you know, ancient Egyptians and ancient Greeks, mm-hmm. uh, you know, etc. They had their own mythology. So when, when, we, when we talk about mythology, are, are we talking about like are all of those together? Or are, we, are we talking about one particular one that really kind of stands out and has all those values and things ingrained into it that, that can then be shared or, or you know, in a sense, maybe um, pe- people, people can relate that to their own culture or their own mythology does, does that kind of it's, it's all of the above yeah so mm-hmm. it's so it's, it's not we're not looking at one particular culture or one particular religion we're looking right. at mythology as a whole and okay. kind of the the idea of stories teaching us and actually that our life is a story our life mm-hmm. is its own epic mythological tale and actually on the retreats um we get people to kind of, we invite people to really look at their ta- at their own story like a mythological epic and actually give different place names and give themselves a different name and actually kind of step back from their story and actually as they as they can kind of um view their story from an outside eye and and make it into this tale they can understand you know perhaps some more purpose in it and they can see the reasons why and actually how they've grown from it. And it's quite a magical, magical experience. They can actually really um, be an outsider looking in at their own life as a, mm-hmm. as the journey or as a tale. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. so it is looking at mythology as a whole. And I think that's one of the great things about mythology is that there are themes that actually cross over cultures and religion, you know, show me a show me a culture that doesn't know what love is show me a culture that doesn't know battle show me a culture that or or a religion that doesn't um know adversity or you know discrepancy or anything like that that's all of those things we all know they all experience death they all experience love they all experience birth actually we're all the same it's just that we've got different vehicles to explain our tales which is mythology right okay yeah yeah. And then I guess also the fact that, you know, um, you, you might be experiencing loss, but it could be coming from, you know, so many different ways. Like somebody could uh, lose a loved one, but somebody else mm-hmm. might have a breakup and somebody else might, mm-hmm. you know, um, have, have, you know, uh, go bankrupt in their business or whatever. So essentially just experiencing exactly. loss, but it's just coming from so many different like ways. Um, so I, I guess I, your work as a life coach really is about helping them understand that, you know, there's a, there's a bigger theme to this rather than just that one thing that you're experiencing right now. Well, that's within the mythology part of it. Mm. And it's certainly a, certainly a, um, a, it's certainly not all of what I do within the coaching, but it certainly yeah. is an aspect of it because we can get into the archetypes and the characters that you play out and all the rest of that as well, mm. um, which has, has immense value and, and you can actually choose you know, to bring in qualities and choose to actually, in some circumstance, I tend to be the tyrant, but actually I'd like to be more of a nurse. So I can actually shift and change um, my approach to different situations through the archetypal stuff, which again is all the mythology. But I guess my, um, as a, as the, in the broader sense, being a coach for me, it's really around, um, around people experiencing their brilliance and knowing what they have inside of them, and also changing their experience of their life. So actually being able to shift their thoughts and feelings through the CBT model or through um, through their schema and core beliefs. And you know, you were talking before about going back to their childhood, and absolutely that that's involved. Um, but really around challenging, where do you want to go? Um, you know, what do you want and how do you want to feel and what invites that feeling from you? And let's work with that. People have everything they need within themselves to be able to shift and grow and change. Mm. So it's not about me giving any advice or opinions because actually my, their life's none of my business. It's actually about me being able to spot links and actually just, you know, we are talking about brilliance before and it's going, okay, so I noticed that you have a fear of failure here. Where else does that where else does that permeate? Oh, well, it's in my relationships. It's in my business. It's in my, you know, when I go down to the shop, I'm scared that I won't da, 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 fill in the blank. You know, so these themes that we have running through our lives, which also mythology encapsulates, actually run through so many different areas. So people could have, you know, that one belief of, of I'm not worth anything or I don't deserve anything. People start to sabotage their, their stuff or they, you know, it's, it's just so super common that, that people think they're not, they're not worth it or they're not good enough or they don't deserve a good relationship. I don't deserve to have money. I don't deserve a good life. Mm. Or they haven't had it role modeled. I don't know what happiness looks like. I don't know yeah. what a functioning relationship looks like. Yeah. So how are they supposed to actually exist in their life when they've got this ideal of what they want, but they've never experienced it. They've never seen it realized. And actually, 
when they when their schema and their core beliefs, you know, that were kind of most of them made before seven, teach them that actually life's not fair and people are out to get you and you don't deserve anything good and you're not worth much, that can be it can be a really tricky kind of thing to grapple. Um, I used to work in the men's prison and such incredible experiences of, um, well, firstly, strength and courage in those men that actually are living this lifestyle that can be so painful and so difficult and challenging. Um, and, and we as a society judge them, but actually they have known anything else so it's you know that these, these these schemas and core beliefs are kind of ground in people from that age and if they grow up seeing you know whether it's gang stuff or whether it's you know really unhelpful relationship patterns or whatever it is that's the norm and so what people don't realize is that you know whatever norm you grew up with there's someone out there with a completely different norm that you might find wrong or offensive or you might judge um, but when you look at it from a schema point of view um, it's you know people can get handed a pretty rough set of cards, mm. actually, and up to them then to change that, to change their experience and to change their behaviour and stuff. And I think um, people certainly in situations um, less fortunate have an incredible task ahead of them. Mm. Yeah, no, that, that's really interesting. I guess looking at it from that point of view, when you haven't experienced anything different, when you don't know anything different, then, you know, I, I guess it, it's, you're, you're lost. Like, you know, for example, you might end up in prison, but you're still lost because it's just like, well, where do I start? Right? Like here I am and like, I'm stuck now I'm in prison and, and where do I go from here? And, and that's great that you actually, essentially they have somebody like you there um, to, to kind of help them and guide them and say, well, actually this, this, this thing that you're experiencing is because of this, this, and this. Let's get some clarity around it, and then let's see what, where we go next from here. So I think that's really powerful. Yeah, it, it's, and, I'm, and I'm not there anymore, sadly, but, but it, was a, it was a great, it was, I loved that vocation. Mm. I think the thing is, is that sometimes even in there, because it's so normal, you know, most of their parents have been to prison, or, mm. you know, it's, it's so kind of ingrained in the kind of what is normal so it's around just really um showing different options and that there's choice there's always choice so regardless of what your core beliefs have taught you or what they tell you about yourself that might not serve you or might be unhelpful there's always choice to change that so um yeah it's about really having people around you that that are aware and have the knowledge and have the understanding um and also uh see potential and see promise and actually can support you in a pretty hearty fashion <laughs> actually <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, Volley, I, I think th this is this is actually quite cool because I I think I I don't I, I had I had Clement on on the show, but that was a really really long time ago. That's like right at the start. Yeah, right, yeah, right. Um, but since then, I don't think I've actually had a life life coach, um, you know, who, who's who kind of specifically um, works with people in in this way. I mean, I've I had people who. Um, like work in a slightly different way like for example just on relationships they focus on relationships or they right. just focus on, on on another element um but you know this this is different where you're actually helping people with whatever they're going through essentially um so yeah. that's that's uh, that's really phenomenal so can you maybe take us behind the scenes and and Tell us a little bit about what your coaching practice actually look like. Like, do you, do you have a system that you have to follow or are, are there certain um, kind of things that you, you have to cover with, with, uh, with the people that you're coaching? Um, the only really, no, there's not. Uh, the only okay. system that I really follow is that in their first meeting with me, um, I'm really, really clear that I don't offer advice or opinions. So a lot of people come wanting answers and I'm here to say, actually, you have them all. <laughs> do you still want to do this? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think that that's really different and new for some people, but actually people need to be autonomous and they need to be empowered. If they, um, if they come to someone else for answers, they're not growing and they're not actually learning to do it themselves. So, um, what I do is I empower people to navigate their own journey. So because of that, I work in six session packages. Mm. So when you, when you um, come on board with me, that's what you purchase. It's a six session package. And I guarantee a shift within that if you apply what we do. Wow. So, um, and you know, it's money back. I'm, I, it, and I'm hundred percent confident that it, it works mm. and it shifts, it shifts people's experience and not yeah. necessarily in the way you think. So what I invite people to do is think of an overarching, um, objective that they want to achieve or the shift they want to see over the six sessions and then with each session uh, within each session sorry 
um, something else inevitably will have come up during the week or during the fortnight or whatever the gap is that we, we see each other um, that they want to look at. So it's really around noticing their triggers. And we can talk, we can sort of work with anything from um, emotional management to communication skills to um, healing wounds that happened when you were a child, you know, where the core beliefs are formed, um, challenging core beliefs, looking at um, the shadow, which is one of my favorite <clears throat> topics in the whole wide entire world, which is that kind of that side of us that we reject, that we deny, that we are ashamed of, and that's kind of with everybody. Um, one of my favorite symbols is the yin yang for exactly that reason. It's the light and the dark and perfect balance that sit within all of us. But we always try and hide our dark because it's not so flash and sometimes it's embarrassing and sometimes it holds guilt and shame and all those really deliciously rich emotions actually that we try and put in the corner. So it's actually about shedding the light on that stuff and going, well, what was this about? So once people can actually get a bit of understanding and perspective around how that came to be there and hopefully accept it, then it's no longer in the shadow. So we might know that, oh, my behavior is this or my pattern is to do this, but we've got a different perspective on it. And actually it's all about um, accepting those parts of us and actually giving it some love. Mm. And what you find is that um, you just, it builds your confidence and your love for yourself so much because you get to know yourself on a rich, deep level when you're no longer kind of denying or trying to push away parts of yourself that actually have a right to be there. They've all got a voice. So the anger inside of us has a voice. The jealousy has a voice. All these parts in us that we that are so yuck and we just don't like to show the world, mm. um, they actually they have a reason to be there and they're just as valid, but we so often try and squash them down, which is when people get ill and, and unrest and they get you know uncomfortable and they're not happy within themselves. So it's really around shining a light on that. So is there specific stuff that I'd show or tell people? Not really. Um, CBT or the core beliefs is a common thing that always comes up. I don't think I've ever had a coaching package where core beliefs um, haven't come up. Um, we can look at the expectations. Um, and, and I mean, they, everything that we look at essentially stems from the core beliefs. So it's great for them to have that foundation um, within that. So it's, it's really around um, what they want to experience. And we do whatever it takes to uh, shift that within them. Yeah. Awesome. Um, now you, you, you kind of talked about it uh, a little bit earlier and, and this is something really interesting to me as well, because I, I came across it and I was like, wow, this is, this is cool. I never thought about it in, in that way, but it's the archetypes, right? Like, did I say that right? Mm. I think it's archetypes, right? Yeah. So yeah. That's really interesting. Like, yeah. it's like, you know, are, are you the gallant warrior <laughs> and what does that mean? And you know, what, what how does it symbolizes? Mm. Uh, in, in my case, I think my archetype will be the lost kitten. Um, because <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, because I, I I try to um, I try to approach like a, a lot of my life from um, a place of curiosity. Like I I, I study mm. a lot of crazy stuff. Um, you know, recently I've been fascinated by fungal intelligence. So that's that's the next thing mm. I'm gonna be looking into: fungal intelligence and and dark matter. That's pretty cool. So I, I study like mm. anything crazy out there. You know, I I'm into it. I I, I want to check it out. Uh, hence the lost kitten. But um, yeah, that that's really interesting about archetypes. So can can you tell talk to us a little bit more about how they work and what they are? Sure. Um, I've got another archetype for you, by the way. Oh, it okay, could be cool. a lost kitten. <laughs> it could be the wandering seeker. <laughs> The what, sorry? Wandering Seeker. Oh, the Wandering Seeker. Oh, that, that sounds cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's really around, again, um, with the archetypes, there's so many, it's, uh, they're like universal characters as kind of a, 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 you know, in a nutshell. So again, you know, same as some stuff that sort of crosses over all cultures or religions, you know, everyone has the lover, everyone has the, you know, and this, I'm talking about epic movies there's the villain there's the hero there's the the damsel there's you know there's there's things there's themes or themes within characters that are kind of always there or they're needed you mm -hmm. know and there's certainly some that are heroed so there's certainly um you know the hero is obviously a pretty clear one in a movie um and the, and within that it, there's there's usually the villain or the nemesis uh, as well that also form the archetypes now um the archetypes we are all born with four so um Caroline Mace actually does, she, she talks about this and she's actually got a card set of archetypes, which is fascinating. So we're all born with, um, with the child, obviously, with the victim, 
the saboteur and the prostitute. So they're four that, um, that we all sort of have. Now, the ideology around that is that we all have 12 and that we, um, the other eight are made up of others that we either employ or that they're kind of warm within us or that are role modeled for us. So it's, it's our, our kind of our, our own personal um, schema archetypes. We have our own like personal mixture, which is quite exciting. <laughs> so what so, happens is that- Sorry, just, just to clarify. So you're not yeah. born, not everybody's born with like, you know, uh, like the universal uh, four types. Like everybody's four types are going to be different. Is, is that right? No, they're all the same. Everyone's born with the four types. Oh, so everybody's born with those four, but uh, like Everyone other ones will be four. different. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, so I don't, kind of the four, I don't know, the four I don't know how, have. yeah, I'm sorry. I just don't know how I feel about Talal the prostitute. Well, I can tell you <laughs> <laughs> so, so we have this, clearly there's other connotations of the word, but really it's around, yeah. um, it's around selling your soul short for material wealth. That's, oh, that's, right. Okay. Yeah. So okay. there's kind of those, yeah, yeah. Um, those kind of ideals that we all sort of grapple with. And, um, and actually it was interesting on the last retreat that Clem and I rang, um, somebody said, you know, how do you know that we're all born with the, with those four? Yeah. And Clem so brilliantly said, okay, so, somebody put up your hand if you haven't experienced sabotage. Somebody put up your hand if you haven't ever been a victim. And nobody could. We've all, I mean, the proof kind of speaks for itself. So um, those are definitely four super, super common archetypes right, okay. that, that everybody is said to be, more, to be born with. Mm. Um, so the other ones can come about through experiences in our life or can come about through our choosing. But when we can become aware and we can actually understand how we are, um, which archetypes we're employing, if, if you like, in certain situations, then we also have the power to change those or to shift them. So for example, I was, um, I had a really clear pattern. I did my emotional timeline, which is always something interesting to do if you're bored on a Saturday afternoon, <laughs> um, very colorful. But um, so what I did was I, worked out which archetypes I was living um, throughout my life. And it came, there was such a clear pattern of victim, saboteur, warrior, victim, saboteur, warrior. And this would happen in my relationship. So I'd become a victim in the relationship for whatever reason. I, I, it could have been within my own mind. Um, mm. And then I would sabotage the relationship and then I'd become the warrior. So the sabotage that would happen, the relationship would break off and then I'd become the warrior. I was like, right, da, 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 and sort of got on my high horse and became really staunch. So the warrior became my archetype and I was really good at being a warrior. I'm totally comfortable with conflict. I've got no problem slaying anything if you know if, if it i'm just i'm quite comfortable and confident in that situation mm. so what then i found was actually in relationships the warrior is not always helpful mm. <laughs> so you can imagine the nature of my relationships you know sort of post that's that sort of pattern you know it's just really unhelpful so i was like okay i'm i'm recognizing that i'm the warrior but there's a lot of qualities that I like about the warrior. I don't want to ditch the warrior. The warrior is really strong. The warrior is really clear. The warrior knows what the warrior wants. The warrior doesn't get walked over. Da, 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 da. So it's really around what can I bring in to make that warrior, um, I guess, lend itself more within my relationships. So then I chose the peaceful warrior. So it's around still having a backbone, still um, not getting walked over and all those great qualities that I wanted to keep were still there, but it didn't, I didn't necessarily need to have confrontation and I didn't need to kind of be sort of staunch and I could soften and, and probably be more thin within a relationship where I was kind of a little bit, um, because of my experiences, I guess I was a bit staunch and I was a bit tough and I was like, right, no guy's going to do this to me. But, 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 um, so, so then I was able to soften and actually know that I was strong and know that I had a backbone and know that I wasn't going to get walked over, but not be so forceful about it. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's really around identifying um, what archetypes you have in play and definitely mm -hmm. in certain situations. And then if you want to bring in another quality, then you can do that. You know, I've had some, some people that I've coached that have, you know, find themselves in relationships that are always the opposite. They're always like, you know, kind of becoming really passive in their relationships and actually settling for less than what they want or what they deserve. And so it's a, okay, well, who do you want to be in that relationship? Well, actually I want to be an Egyptian goddess. It's like, sweet, let's do that. So when they approach that, um, as, as, uh, Nefertiti, <laughs> do you know what I mean? They're not going to accept less than what they deserve. And it's really around just kind of trying different things on until it kind of, you know, or measuring yourself against it. So if I said, if I said, okay, I'm going to be the peaceful warrior, 
and I get into a conflict with somebody, I can then go, okay, how would the peaceful warrior manage this? How do I want to um, be still respectful and still get my point across? Mm. So it's, it's really around, um, firstly, identifying what you are without judgment. There's no, there's no point in judgment ever. Um, yeah. And then going, okay, so where do I, what direction do I want to move? Like, where do I want to go to? Okay. So in, in terms of these archetypes, are, are, is there an infinite amount of archetypes or is it more the fact that you have certain archetypes and then you get just different iterations or variations of those? I think, I think there's limitless archetypes. There, I mean, there's just so many because even the elements are archetypes, you know, so the, the air and the fire and the earth are archetypes. So there's just, there's kind of like when you, um, start matching stuff up it's just it is just limitless and you can actually make whatever you want like you can be a lost kitten or you can be a wandering seeker it doesn't actually matter <laughs> it is right. though it's whatever fits you know like right. if you if you're like no actually i want to be a cat okay cool <laughs> you know i'm not going to argue <laughs> so but then maybe maybe you want to switch maybe you don't want to be lost anymore maybe you just want to be a kitten but maybe you want to be a ferocious kitten or a staunch kitten, or maybe you want to bring in something else that can, that can kind of um, add a quality to what you already have. Mm. Right. That's, that's so interesting. That is super mm. interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not, not me being a kitten, by the way, I'm talking about <laughs> in case you're like, yeah, so interesting. Tell us a kitten. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, that I, I, I just love cats. I, I, I think kittens are just, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, the, hence the lost kitten. But anyway, yes. Now, um, moving on. With these architects, that's so interesting. Like, um, mm. I, I came across them, and um, you know, the first time I heard about it, and I was like, oh, what, what is this thing? What's the peaceful warrior, or you know, the, yeah. Um, whatever the other other types are uh, i can't think of one at the top of my head right now but it, it was just so interesting to see like well actually you know th there's there's an aspect of you that you're giving voice to by recognizing that archetype um and, Absolutely. and it's almost like you're you're empowering that that part of you to kind of step exactly. forward and and you know um take take charge and and i i thought that was that was really really interesting um but yeah it, it, it does Sorry, you, you mentioned just just you mentioned Nefertiti, uh, you know, while while you were talking, and I'm just wondering if these archetypes do they then relate back to mythology as well? Well, that's um, that's with, I guess that's the vehicle that I exercise the archetypes within. Sometimes I can use them in a coaching session, but we do um, within the, re the mythology retreat, for example, we do sort of look at the archetypes and and that sort of stuff. I have used it in my coaching. Um, you know, you know, I might have somebody who um, has is sort of struggling intimately, and so they might step into the temptress. Or what do you? How do you want to be in that moment? Well, how do you want to feel? And how can you channel that? And sometimes it can just be the quality. There was, you know, a guy that I spoke to years ago who who just wanted to be more kind of full of confidence within mm -hmm. his workplace, and so we did some some kind of um, we had some processes around him stepping into himself as confident and actually just be confident. I was going to say his name, just be confident you. So just step into this. And then he, and he noticed like when he can kind of embody that and bring it in and breathe it in, he was like, he, he held his head up and his chest was up and he looked me in the eye and he was just, had a really different energy around him. And mm -hmm. so it's actually when you can do it from the inside out, it always works better rather than trying to, you know, be fake. Cause that's, that's something that's really important to, um, to kind of outline is that it's not about being fake and it's not about play acting. It's not about um, putting on a, you know, like, Oh, today I'm going to be, da, da, da. it's not, it's not, we're not acting. It's actually about, like you said, accessing that part within you and giving it a voice and giving it some fire. So yeah. giving it permission to be validated and actually step into that situation, whatever that could be. So you've mm. already got all this stuff inside you. It's just, it's just accessing it and bringing it out rather than um, being fake or pretending that we're something. Right. Okay that it's i think such a um i think effective way to to go and and explore places where people usually don't want to go and and usually hide from so yeah uh, yeah it, it is great and you know what i love to learn more about it and then see how 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 that can be like how i can use it personally because i, I love to yeah, experiment sure. with that as well um now, and i think 
Oh, Sorry, can I just say one thing? Yeah, Sorry. Of course, of course you can. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it's, not, it's not to be um, just put on top either. So it's really important that I think um, if you do have an issue in a certain area or if you do have a, a challenge or a struggle, that you also look at what underpins the beliefs in those areas. So it's not a kind of add-on. Does that make sense? So yeah. it's really important to look at the root of the cause as well. Um, you know, mm. look at, like, really unpack that, that kind of work with it alongside it so it's not sort of standing alone you know, like, oh, today, Michael, I'm going to be. It's not, it's not sort of like that. It's really around, you know, unpacking and mm. doing this sort of the grit work, but you're going to have to change some behavior, which is going to feel really different. Yeah. So, um, and it can come out, come about organically when you do sort of heal those wounds, mm. but also in the interim, it can be a wee bit weird when you're changing sort of you're changing your perspective and all of a sudden you're like, oh, maybe I'm not so bad and maybe I'm this, and, you know, and so we'll just try this on and see how, how do you want to feel and what's going to allow that that um that road for you right okay mm -hmm. okay yeah uh, that that makes it that makes it a lot clearer um in terms of like the healing work involved um i know that you work a lot with energy and and so does clement actually he, he works a lot with mm -hmm. energy as well uh and breathing um yep <laughs> fascinating because Traditionally, when you think about energy, it's, it's like, you know, what, what you learn in a science class, you know, the heat energy, the light energy, the, you know, gravitational potential energy and chemical energy and, and things like that. Um, but it, it, it goes beyond that. And it's really about, you know, how you interact with energy and how, mm -hmm. you know, energy can get it stuck. And, and how you make yeah. it flow and, and it's really really interesting so can you can you maybe explain that a little bit to the audience about how you actually use energy in the healing work yeah that's a good question I think um, I guess it's kind of become second nature now <laughs> and and I could almost call it intuition or you know I could, I could, it's just a sense that you that you sort of experience when um, when you know something really well. So um, I think that while part of it is energy, um, realistically, it's, it's made up of many things, which is my experience, mm -hmm. my intuition, um, my skills, my subconscious skills of body language. So if someone sits in front of me, I'm like, oh, oh okay. You know, and, it, and it, it can be really easy sometimes to, to sort of sense that stuff. But I don't think it's made up purely of energy work, if I'm honest, um, for me. So yeah. um, yeah. So, and I do believe, like, I I, I um, do a little bit of Reiki, and I do a little bit of sort of things that that do kind of use that kind of um, that energy because energy holds so much of who we are. Um, everything we've done, everything we've been through, all of our thoughts, everything that holds our shadow, and all of that stuff is really incredible. So, getting a real sense of somebody through the energy, I, I find really easy. Um, but I do think it's made up of other things as well for me. Um, right. Yeah, so it's made up of, of my um, experience and expertise and, and knowledge around certain areas and certain things. Um, yeah, so I, I, I think that's not answering your question, but that's where I sit with it. Right, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, with, with energy, that's, that's I think, for, for people who might not be familiar with, um, you know, life coaching and how that works, um, mm. or, or even, you know, a certain aspects of mysticism and spirituality, they, I guess, would struggle to understand how, how they're, you know, using energy for healing or, or, you know, how energy can get stuck and all that sort of stuff. Because obviously, traditionally, you think about like electrical energy and, and heat energy, and, you know, you have those classifications of energy. Right. Uh, but like, you know, when, when, you, when you really get, get into the, the crux of things, it's just like, well, everything is made out of energy, right? Energy is just like the very exactly. basic kind of element of, 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 you know, life and existence anywhere, really. Exactly. Um, so it's, it's really then interesting to see how that can be employed in different ways in terms of life coaching or, or spirituality or mm. mysticism where, you know, all, all these different disciplines are talking about how, you know, energy at that, you know, the fundamental energy that makes up everything can be used for different yeah. things, including healing. So um, mm. that's, that's, that's yeah. the kind of area that I, I was kind of going towards and wanted to explore. 
And I think the breath holds a lot of that. So um, we do a lot of breath work. Mm. Um, Clem does actually connected breathing, which is really about around releasing. You're talking about stuck, about getting stuck in the energy. And, and that's exactly what that does. So the breath um, is hugely important. So we house our emotions in our tummy. And so a a lot of people that, that shallow breathe, which I experience a lot, are usually like they're usually ignoring their emotions or they've got them boxed into their belly and they're not that it's not letting them any sort of light in there. So they're not so you can so the thing there's things like that. So for example, if I and that's where I talk about the body language and stuff comes into it. So if someone sits in front of me, I notice that they're breathing into their chest rather than than their stomach, I think, okay, so they don't like to share their emotions. They perhaps are not, you know, comfortable being vulnerable, or well, they've got some schema around the fact that men don't cry, for example. Do you know what I mean? So it doesn't, so that sort of stuff, it's, it's all of that. It includes knowledge, experience, energy, breathing, you know, blah, blah, blah. So um, with breath work, there's a lot of um, releasing happens in the breath and a lot of um, amazing uh, relaxation and sinking, that sinking into yourself that I spoke about earlier. A lot of that happens with the breath. So being really able to breathe into an emotion or breathe into um, yourself or breathe into your brilliance or breathe into an archetype, that stuff all kind of, um, if you can breathe into stuff, there's, there's just releasing, um, releasing can happen all over the place if you allow the space for it. So it's really, we experience life um, with our bodies and we experience life with our whole being, not just with our mind or just with our heart or just with our face. So it's really around, um, that's the holistic part of it. And that's, that does make the coaching that uh, Clem and myself do quite different to other life coaching, which can mm. be more sort of face the fear and do it anyway. And, and, simply cognitive whereas we do include the whole of the our physical being as well knowing that if you think about the breath and, and all the different experiences that the breath has like if you get a shock you know that stuff can get trapped or if you are scared there's that sort of that micro breathing you know that, that all that stuff actually is completely different within our within our physical um being and so it, the breath holds so many memories actually in within its cells in our in our body so that's when stuff gets lodged so if we have a trauma particularly and and we do and the breath uh can get stuck and that's what that's what happens and that's what how clem releases that through the connected breathing which is just such a magical experience that that stuff's full on um but it really shifts really shifts energy in, a, in an incredible way so oh, the yeah. breath is the breath is really really important um yeah i wasn't encourage lady to have ugly bellies have ugly bellies just let it let it uh, you know, allow it to rise and fall allow allow your belly to be big to allow for that emotion to kind of release mm, yeah. yeah no i i've i've definitely experienced that with covered with, with with the breathing um he's he's so good he's so good as well i mean oh, it's amazing. It's phenomenal yeah yeah it, it's absolutely amazing uh, and and for people in the audience um i will put the link to clement's interview below in the description as well if you want absolutely. to check that out uh, it's one of the yeah. first very first few interviews i've done it's like second one i did third one i did something like this is like really oh, one wow. of the first interviews i did yeah so, so it's a while ago but i'll put the link below cool. in the description but he's absolutely amazing um yes yeah and uh the it's definitely the, the breath work that he does it's it's really transformational you can yeah. you definitely feel the difference you know before and after it's uh, it really is um, amazing um and and i also know that obviously with with both you and clement you you kind of take a holistic approach to to life coaching as well yeah. like like you you know mentioned there earlier so um that's really interesting that obviously you can have different types of life coaches who have different approaches yeah as well so you know for people out there in the audience if you're thinking about you know uh reaching out and and you know uh getting a life coach then maybe it's looking at what kind of approach they have and does that resonate mm -hmm. with you is that something that you're comfortable with is that something that you think will help you with the particular issue you have or is it going to be adding more to the, the issue in the sense that you are already stressed and then it is for the stress of like, I have to do this, but I'm not comfortable with doing this. And there are times you have to do that. You know, of course you have to face the fear and get past it. But if it's a constant struggle, then obviously that's something that you, you, you might want to consider before you, uh, you know, reach out to a life coach and, and, you know, start, start actually, you know, taking their services on board. Um, Vani, in, in terms of, you know, life coaching how much does mindset play into it we obviously talk about you know the growth mindset and the fixed mindset and things like that but how much does mindset play into somebody who 
will actually you know achieve results from from the coaching and then actually carry that forward compared to somebody who actually you know let's say for example they have a fixed mindset and and they did they just get stuck and, and they, they find it really really difficult to get past past the things that they're uh, trying to work on yes yeah, so, so um Mindset is an interesting one for me because I believe that it's made up of schema or core belief. So it's, um, and within that, there are so many variables. So, um, yeah, tricky. Um, I think that's the benefit, like when we do the one on one coaching, is really unpacking and getting a really clear picture of everything that's in there. Um, and for some people, actually, um, who work themselves to the bone, I'm actually encouraging them to back off off and stop judging and you know like mm. actually how can you support yourself and actually what drives you so some people that might be particularly hard on themselves or quite judgmental on themselves actually all they want is respite love and care um so it's actually about meeting whatever needs there and, and quite often those are needs that went unmet when they were younger so yeah. it all kind of it all uh, fits in so when you talk about results um it's quite ambiguous not from your perspective not from your point but just from um, that I guarantee people a shift in the area that they choose. So um, that that might not look like you think it would look. So it might not mean ticking stuff off their list or achieving a certain thing. It might be um, achieving relaxation or achieving love for themselves and actually supporting themselves. Or it might mean that they... Um, don't achieve which is an interesting one so um you, sometimes you have clients that are push 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 and they, they're kind of here because they want to you know they want to retire by 35 and they want to make sure they get that third house and they're, they're actually driving themselves into an early grave because they've got these things that they want to achieve and it's like okay well let's look at the values and actually how do you want to be and what do you want to you know and then they actually go maybe i don't need that third house actually maybe i can actually just kick back and start to enjoy stuff and so their experience of life is really important to me and that's kind of the driver um mm -hmm. more important than perhaps that third house so actually what what is life about for you what are the core values and actually what's the driver why do you want to retire by that age and why do you want to have that third house and what's important about blah 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 blah, blah. and usually it's um, it again stems back from a core belief around they're not good enough or they're not worth something or they don't deserve something or someone's told them that they can't do this or that they're useless or that they can't achieve. And so they spend their whole life trying to answer or prove themselves to this notion that someone said 20 years ago that actually if they wanted to uh, have more value in life or what they perceive as value, they might actually just relax a little bit more and have a bit more fun and go out with friends and actually mm -hmm. enhance their experience of life. So mindset is a tricky one because it has, it's so broad uh, and um, what people are trying to achieve can be really, really diff different. Um, quite often people will come here with an idea of shifting one thing and they'll leave with something completely different, but something that they find more valuable. Yeah. Um, just like with my online program, quite often people will start with a, with a, um, a goal of, I want to lose weight, for example. And knowing that weight has got so much to do with worth and trust and safety and people actually carrying extra weight for their own safety. So once people, once we actually go back and heal some of the, un, the sort of underpinning wounds, surprisingly enough, they're like, weight's just falling off. For me, I'm not even trying, I'm not doing anything. It's just because it doesn't need to be there anymore. You don't need yeah. that safety barrier. So yeah. it's really around um, going intrinsically, which is what makes it holistic, going inside and actually working from the wounds out. And when you do that, um, what you thought you wanted might shift organically. Um, and people will be like, can I change my goal? Because actually I really want to look at this now. It's like, yeah, that's fine. So it's, you know, but the, the fact of the matter is that no matter where you work, um, in what area, it's going to affect or it's going to impact the whole of you because you are mm. one person and one energy. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Wow. Um, we explored so much there. This has been a <laughs> conversation. I, I loved it. And uh, to be honest with you, I, I think if, if we had the time, I'd love to stay on and, uh, you know, go on for, for a for good few hours and explore more rabbit <laughs> holes. It's been absolutely fascinating. Uh, but Bonnie, um, you know, b before we start to 
finish off, can you tell us a little bit about where people can go to find out more about you, what you do, your online course, your retreats that you're organizing, you have a mm. Facebook group, I know you're doing so many yeah. amazing things. So uh, talk to us a little bit about that, how people can reach out to you, find out more about you, and uh, how can they help you right now? Yeah, so the, the um, easiest way at this moment is probably through the Facebook page, The Beyond is the business, so The Beyond on Facebook. Um, also, there's a website, which is a spacebeyond.com. So that is getting um, zhuzhed at the moment, So, um, but, it, but it will be up and running and happy very shortly. So yeah, probably through Facebook is the easiest way or, um, or email. But yeah, Facebook at the Beyond, you can message me through that for sure. Cool. Uh, and what is the email? The, oh, which one, sorry? The, your, your email, what, what is it? Um, so there's, there's the one through the website at, the, at the spacebeyond.com. Okay, right. Um, so you can, the email can come through there. Yeah. Otherwise, oh, okay. just the Facebook person. Just the Facebook person. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's got it. It's easiest at the moment. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Awesome. And awesome. so with, within that, so there's the one-on-one -on -one coaching packages that I do, mm -hmm. which is the six session package that I talked about earlier. Um, guaranteed a shift with, um, with anything that, that you want, which will turn out to be more amazing and, and you'll see your epic self in reality, which will be a really nice experience. <laughs> um, there's an online uh, program, which is a seven week program, which goes over some tools and skills that you can apply to yourself. And so that includes, um, it's called how to change your challenge to cheese with the seven keys to freedom. So that's really around flipping up those um, annihilations and looking at it as an opportunity. So it's, it's changing the challenge challenge into something pleasurable. Um, we look at core beliefs, we look at um, inner child work, we look at the shadow, we look at the mythology um, stuff, we look at communication skills, at thinking styles, um, the three minds. So there's a lot of a lot of really great stuff in there and about the change cycle as well. Um, so and that includes like a, a, a phone call once a week as well to try and apply those models to your chosen goal over the seven weeks. Um, and then there's the retreats as well. So um, we do the mythology retreats, which is, uh, we've got a couple happening next year. We've got a shadow retreat coming up in November. Now that's not an entry level retreat. So that's only for people who have done some work before because it gets really gritty and can be quite hard going. Um, and we cap the, the um, number of uh, participants on those retreats as well. So we have a cap of 15 on the mythology retreat and a cap of 12 on the shadow retreat just because of the nature of the work is really in depth and quite challenging for people. Um, wow. So we need, it's, we're kind of, um, I run these with Clem by the way. So it's really around us making um, a really safe emotional environment for people is the most important, important thing for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there's the online community, which is the tree house, which we hang out in the, cause the beyond is a tree as its logo, which is really important to me. So um, the treehouse is where we play. So um, that's a free, um, anybody can join the treehouse. And what happens on there is just sort of thoughts for the day and um, kind of ideas and perspectives. And we look at things like Te Whare Tapafa, which is a, a um, New Zealand, it's a Maori uh, native uh, model of well-being and balance. Um, we've looked at the elements, we've looked at um, lots of different things within there. So we have different days of the week, which sort of um, invite you to claim your brilliance. So today is right those day. <laughs> so what have you got going on that's right there? So it's really around claiming your awesome self and around encouraging people to start to see their brilliance and to really um, own that and to walk with it. Beautiful. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Um, guys, there you have it. This was an absolutely amazing conversation. And uh, Bonnie is truly world-class. She has helped hundreds, if not thousands of people. Um, and she really understands what she's talking about. I mean, you know, when I, every, every single interaction that pretty much I've had with Bonnie, where we try to talk about anything um, around life coaching related, etc. I mean, she is just, absolutely on it. She also is very good at explaining things. Um, and, I, and I found that that was, that's, that's really important uh, in a, in a life cage, life caging, life coaching is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> life coaching uh, sort of environment simply because you want somebody who can not just help you in the moment, but also help you understand what is it that you need to do uh, in order to carry it forward. So it, it, it's become a permanent transformation.
Mm. And she, you know, guarantees results. And, and that's what I absolutely love. Like she talks to you and she will say, look, I guarantee you results 100% or your money back. Mm. I mean, how many people out there are doing that? And she has so much energy, so much charisma. I mean, you saw this throughout the interview. Her energy was just spilling over, right? Okay. Like it was just coming out and creating a flood around me. And I was actually getting energized. It was perfect. Um, so I would highly encourage you guys to go reach out and, you know, um, just start a conversation with Bonnie. I mean, what we all have stuff that we go through in our life, okay? We all have things that we want to work on. We all have things that we want to achieve. We all have things that we want to fix and get better at and their pains and their problems that you want to solve and alleviate, etc. But a lot of the times we put up a mental block and saying, you know, oh, you know, what if, you know, money is an issue or time is an issue or commitment is an issue or, you know, I, I don't feel, you know, comfortable sharing this stuff and should I be, you know, saying this or is it just in my head, etc. But here's the thing, when you have any other sort of issue, like your health related issue, you go straight to the doctor. Okay. You don't just try and sit at home and try and figure it out yourself. You have a legal issue. You go to a lawyer for their professional opinion. That's what they've trained in, right? Because you're not qualified to sit at home and deal with a legal issue. Same with finance and, you know, and accountancy and, and budgeting or whatever else, like you go to an expert. So a lot of times when you have those walls coming up, it's, it's just superficial. And I would encourage you to go and reach out to one. She is a holistic life coach. She deals with all sorts of issues like you heard in this conversation. So go out and reach out to Wani. Um, and I, I guarantee you, you will get results. So with that, again, Vani, thank you so much for being here. This has been an absolutely awesome conversation. Maybe go, we can go for round two sometime. Absolutely, for sure. Maybe you want to come get some coaching to Lel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <Well. laughs> fly over to New Zealand to, to get some coaching. Um, why not? Yeah, why I not? I can do it online, so there's no, there's no problem with that. Exactly. Can do it online. <laughs> yeah, and, and there, there's another thing, guys. Like, you don't have to be in New Zealand <laughs> to get Dr. Vonnie. You could be anywhere in the world. She she yeah. does do uh, online coaching, so that's absolutely brilliant. Plus, you got her online programs and stuff going on as well. Um, so, which is perfect. Like, you don't have to physically be there, and and you can just literally reach out and uh, you know sign up to the online program or sign up to one through coaching. Mm -hmm. And it's a six six uh, you know call package that they yeah. that they buy, right? So. It is. And the reason for yeah. that as well is that I don't believe in people to keep becoming codependent on me. I want to empower people to be able to, you know, to be able to sort of shift their own stuff after that. So that happens more often than not. So it's, it's awesome. It really is. Awesome. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. There you go, guys. Um, we've, we've kind of been restricted by time. I'd love to stay on and, and explore other things, but we'll, we'll just settle that in round two. But with that, make sure you subscribe <laughs> to the channel and enter the competition, which is absolutely huge. I'm super excited uh, by it. Mm. And uh, on the 1st of September, I will announce the winner. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and just leave a comment on this video or any other video. And to be honest, me and Vonnie would love to hear your ideas, opinion and thoughts and takeaways from this conversation and what, what strategies, what kind of ideas you will be employing and what what is it that you found most fascinating we'd love to know what you have to say so leave those comments down below um, and subscribe so you get entered in the competition as well if you haven't already subscribed other than that stay awesome hustle hard and i will catch you in the next one